Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here at Cedia Expo 2013. I'm talking with Greg Lowen, who is a calibrator and THX instructor and Cedia instructor. You've got Absolutely. you've been teaching some classes here at Cedia. Absolutely, yes. So what have you been teaching? Well, the first class we did yesterday was called uh, EST 311, and it's the the basic concepts of video calibration. Uh, it's based on the THX calibrator disc, just five or seven basic patterns, and just how to get installers up and running, tweaking out displays in a very quick, very fast and efficient manner. So this is uh, tweaking the basic picture controls? Yep. So the brightness, contrast, color, tint, sharpness? Yeah, we start, it's a three hour class, the first half of the class is the brightness, contrast, color, tint, and then and we, and we, we give them some examples of how to use the disc, then the second half of the class, I give them a taste of what really the advanced calibration, where they can go in this field if they choose to get into it and really, you know, take it past that, you know, take it up to the next level. Right, exactly. Which would require them to take the THX course or the ISF course, uh, purchase some relatively expensive equipment, and and really get their chops on that serious calibration. Absolutely. Which yeah. I hope a lot of them do because, you know, it's a valuable service. Uh, and then the second class you taught. Uh, that was just today, just finished about an hour ago. Okay. It's a brand new class CD is offering. It's called EST073. Uh, um, I designed the class for them, and it's on advanced calibration techniques. You know, how, um, how does our calibration technique change as the technology evolves? And we are certainly seeing technology evolve big time this year. I mean, we have OLED, we have 4K or UHD, or as Joe Kane likes to call it, 2160p. <laughs> um, and I wanted to ask you about that, in fact. Uh, for example, 2160p, uh, we're not entirely sure yet whether or not what, what color gamut is going to get used. Totally. Uh, or what bit depth is going to get used. So how do you inform people when there are so many unknowns? That's that great envelope of gray area. <laughs> we have Ultra HD, we know the specification for Blu-ray right. is Rec. 709, uh, color, you know, Rec. The color, gamut. color gamut, Gamma 2.2, 8-bit system for playing Blu-ray, but we have the, the Rec. 2020 spec, which is out there saying we have this huge color gamut. Much larger than what we have now. Twice the size, yeah. almost. That, um, it's going to be a gamma of 2.4, um, and we don't have displays that can hit this, this color gamut yet. Let alone, do, right. do are the displays coming out? Are they going to be HDMI 2.0 compliant or not? We're in a gray area. We're in a serious gray area. And then there's OLED, or OLED, which we, uh, we know, I mean, I know from just looking at what I've seen, it has a much, much wider color gamut, right? Uh, whether or not it conforms to Rec. 2020 or not, we don't know. But is that that's something else that you've talked about in your class? I'm Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Oh, I've actually been dealing with OLED now for several years in the post-production environment. Ah, right. The professional uh, monitors from yeah, Sony. The Sony monitors yeah. specifically. Beautiful. I mean, infinite black levels, infinite dynamic range. They're incredible. Yeah. But there are challenges with this technology because um, with the new technologies, they don't follow the standard. We call this the 1931 as two degree standard observer curve. And there can actually be color differences. So if you use a basic Panasonic plasma and you're calibrated to Rec. 709 and you use even a, a high end spectral radiometer and calibrate the OLED to Rec. 709, they'll look different. And we're in a whole weird world of gray areas of, well, how do we calibrate them? And really, color matching between the different technology types is kind of not reality. Um, but you can get the OLEDs matching everywhere in the world perfectly, but an OLED will not match a plasma perfectly. And where are we going with this? We, we have to be designing the, a new, a new um, observer curve that's updated from 1931 that's going to take into effect the different primary types of the new technologies as they're emerging. Right, exactly. What about LED projectors? How do those fall in the new technology? For example, over at uh, Digital Projection, I don't know if you've seen it yet, they have a new Titan uh, three-chip DLP projector that uses LED illumination. Right. Uh, they claim it's putting out 2,000 lumens, which is way more That's than That's awesome, yeah, put yeah. on sunglasses. Yeah, almost, exactly. Uh, how does that uh, relate to what we're talking about here in terms of the change of color gamut, the ability to read it properly with the meters that right. we have and so on? Well, the, the premise of the class is if you have a good standardized methodology when you're doing your calibration and you follow the standardized process and at the same time you use a good quality spectral radiometer, as the technology evolves, there shouldn't be a lot of change. 
you should have to deal with, okay, maybe you have to look at 4K processing versus 1080p processing and the differences, but the actual hitting a color gamut or getting green at a certain shade or getting D65 at three and three, 329 for XY coordinates is the same regardless of the technology. So you have a premise of a good solid standard and you take that forward. Uh, with the laser technology, as your example is. Or LED. LED, um, and, and lasers for that and matter. And laser can, for that matter, You can yeah. have very, very narrow red, blue, green spikes, and if you don't have a good quality spectral radiometer, you might not even be reading on that spike, you may be right reading on the edge, and be totally off on the color. Yeah, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. Um, so you got any other classes coming up uh, during the show, or are you done now? Just done, done the two classes now, and tomorrow's enjoyment day. I get to walk the show and actually see what's going on. And see what's going on. What we've, one thing we've discovered, we've already been walking the show a lot, uh, there are surprisingly few 4K displays out there. Sony's got a new lower cost projector, uh, the uh, VW600. It's, it was, I, I was originally thought it was the 500, but that's for the European market. The 600's okay. for the domestic market. Uh, but digital projection doesn't have one, uh, Epson doesn't have one, JVC doesn't have one. JVC has their E-shift, right? Right. Uh, but that's basically 1080p with uh, uh, moving the pixels around. Yep. It can now accept a 4K signal, which it couldn't before, so that's in advance. But I'm surprised that there aren't more 4K TV uh, projectors around. There's, it's that big gray area again. Yeah. Manufacturers don't want to be releasing something that might not be compliant with HDMI 2.0. You know, or with Rex 2020, the new color exactly. gamut. And, and, and we're at a show in September, you know, the, the HDMI Rec 2.0 was only 60 days ago. They haven't had time for product development to actually catch up with that. Exactly. So, that's, so we got to look at CES. Yes. What's going to happen in 2014, and that's kind of where we're going. That's kind of where we're going. Well, I hope to see you there. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Okay, thanks, Scott.